Hey everyone, Matt here. One of the best ways to learn a synthesizer is to investigate the presets that come with it. After all, the sound designers making these patches have not only tried to make them sound good and be musically useful, but they are also making an effort to utilize the most important features that are unique to that instrument. In this dissection, we'll be looking at Massive's TV Party patch from the factory library and learning how it uses clever modulation from the performer and stepper to create drums and melody with a single note press. Let's check it out. Okay, so I've loaded up TB Party. This is exactly how it sounds as soon as you load the patch. I'm literally just holding a D2 on my keyboard and it is playing this entire almost of a song. You know, it's a, a lead, there's a kick drum, there's snare and hi-hat, there's like some sort of percussion happening. So to begin, we're going to start dissecting this by pulling back each of the individual elements and kind of isolating each element on its own. I'm even going to turn off the effects and I'm also going to turn off the filters so we can kind of hear, once I dial in the oscillator again, what we're dealing with. All right, so there's obviously some sort of melody happening and that is because of this number five. This green five represents the modulators down here. So this five is assigned to a stepper. Normally, you might see an LFO when you first open up Massive. It's a great dual LFO that you can do all sorts of amazing modulation with. But if you want to get to the performer and stepper, you have to hit this little drop down arrow. So the stepper is a 16 step sequencer with values from zero to 12. So this is perfect, obviously 12. That would be great for, I don't know, the notes in a scale, something melodic maybe. So we can hear each of these lines playing higher notes. And that is because what we have done here is assign five to the pitch and then modulating by a certain amount. You can see how you can go in either direction, up or down. And this was assigned a value of about 24, which would be perfect for two octaves worth. You can go higher. Or lower. You can assign the steps. Any value you want as well. So very slick. And of course you can come in and dial up a new melody. And if you want to actually lock these to whole numbers instead of trying to get specific, you can hold option on your keyboard and move up and down and it will go by whole number, making it that much easier to play actual notes with the stepper. Now, the other part that's making this kind of 303 acid bass kind of sound is the filter. And as you can see here on the filter, it is assigned to number six and given an amount. So you can see the amount right here. And if we look at number six, we're looking at a performer, which is actually triggering the filter open and closed to play the rhythmic section. So very slick modulation there. Now, to look at the performer a little bit closer, let's dial in oscillator three. Now oscillator three is providing that kick drum. So let's actually isolate that and listen. So this is being triggered by stepper, or I'm sorry, performer number seven. So what's happening here is this is a pure sine wave. Remember the wave table is all the way over to sine. And what it is, is a heavy amount of pitch modulation, just as you would expect when synthesizing a kick. So you take a sign, it starts up here at a very high pitch and sweeps down to the bottom in a very short time frame. All right. And that pitch modulation is happening here. Also, intensity is making it an amplitude as well. 
But what's happening here is the, the performer has, again, 16 step sequencer, except instead of loading values from like zero to 12, like the stepper did, it actually loads curves, like these envelope curves. So you can see a quick one is going to provide that kind of classic kick synthesis pitch modulation. But you can choose different curves, for instance, no drop at all. Or maybe a double. Or even a quadruple. Kind of get a nice ratchet type sound. Or a reverse. Pretty much whatever you like. You know, you can kind of come in here and adjust it however. And now you can adjust the amount of modulation to change the tone of your kick drum. And using masses waves tables, you can change from things like sine into a square or just do something wonky and crazy altogether. whatever you like. Now, the other thing you heard was snare and hi-hat. Right? So the noise generator, which is just white noise in this case, is being modulated amplitude-wise by performer 8. So let's hear what's happening there. Essentially, the different shapes are playing patterns for hi-hat or snare. And all these shapes are doing is adjusting how much of this modulation is actually occurring, whether it's a little bit by a short amount or the full shebang, like on 5 and 13, all the way up and decaying a little slower. Very slick move. So together... You have that. And lastly, there's this kind of weird percussion sound. Kind of this ringy, tingy, interesting little uh, oscillator too happening, kind of almost like a, a whistle or like some kind of digital tambourine happening here. And kind of filling it all out real nicely. So you can see immediately how these performers and steppers are able to create all this. Now there's one last layer to look at, and that is the macro controls. Lastly, the macro controls are a huge asset for any massive patch, and especially this one. So imagine how boring it would be if you just played this over and over without any kind of changes to the filters or the patterns or anything like that. So the macro controls can be assigned to a whole bunch of useful stuff. For instance, something like the filter can be assigned to both cutoff and resonance at the same time where you only have to turn one knob. Rather than assigning multiple MIDI CCs or trying to do this with the mouse, forget about that nonsense. You can also do interesting things like number four here is an isolator. which is doing double duty where it's actually changing the low frequencies on not just the shelf, but the boost and the frequency of the EQ. It's also doing something to the performer, which is adjusting between this crossfade. So the cool thing about the performer is that it's two 16 step sequencers. Each can have different modulation sources. And then this is essentially a crossfader, like a DJ crossfader between the two channels. So to better show this off, look at what it's doing when you're doing the bass drum roll, which is assigned to number seven. So very slick that it's kind of getting in here and doing that, rather than you having to kind of 
dump into all these menus and, and worry about where the crossfader is with a mouse or a MIDI CC, the macro control handles that right away. So same things like the snare drum roll, which is on uh, the two channels between performer number eight and all sorts of other interesting things. You can even do rests where it's simultaneously dropping the amplitude of oscillator two, that crazy kind of percussion patch and the, uh, the noise generator, which is the snare and the hi-hat. So overall, just an amazingly complex, well-executed preset showing off Massive's amazing modulators, specifically the Performer, Stepper, and the great macro controls. Take care. Have a good day.